Thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace. We will be in Genesis chapter 22. You don't have to stand. We'll go through it as we deliver God's message. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, in the name of Jesus, we come that you might speak to us. Praying, God, that you move me out of the way so you can have your way that you move everything that would be any type of distraction to what you're trying to tell us and what you're trying to do. We thank you for this Holy Communion Sunday, God. Thank you for all that you've already done. Have thine own way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Right now, just look at Genesis 22, verse 16. That's where the title of our message comes from. Genesis 22, 16 says, and said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing. That's the title of our message today, because thou hast done this thing. Because thou hast done this thing. Once a person accepts Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior, they become a believer. They must immediately realize that this new life in Christ requires that you walk by faith and not by sight. The believer must know and realize how crucial faith is to their journey. Hebrews 11.6 says, but without faith, I mean, it's very clear. You don't have to look up the Greek. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he, God, is, and that he, God, is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently means, you know, that, that midnight craving for that pint of ice cream you ain't supposed to have. And you diligently go to every store <laughs> seeking that pint of ice cream that you ought not have. But diligently seek, you gotta, you gotta believe that he's gonna reward those that diligently seek him. For well, Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. God has provided in his word examples of people of faith in addition to our perfect example, Jesus Christ, who according to Hebrews 11, 2 and 8, is the author and finisher of our faith. Abel, Abel, Abel whose name was eventually changed by God to Abraham, is a very good example of a person of faith. God changed Abram's name, meaning high father, to Abraham, meaning father of multitude, Genesis 17, 5. At the same time, God changed Abraham's wife's name from Sarai, meaning my princess, to Sarah, meaning mother of nations. This name change took place when God gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision. God also reaffirmed his promise to give Abraham a son, specifically through Sarah, and told him to name his son Isaac, meaning laughter. Abraham had another son, Ishmael, through Sarah's handmaiden, Hagar. But God's promise to bless the nations to Abraham was to be fulfilled through Isaac's line, from whom Jesus descended in Matthew 1, 1 through 17, and Luke 3, 23 to 38. Isaac was the father of Jacob, who became Israel. His 12 sons formed the 12 tribes of Israel, the Jews. The physical descendants of Abraham and Sarah formed many nations. In a spiritual sense, their descendants are even more numerous. Galatians 3.29 says, all that all who belong to Jesus Christ, Jew, Gentile, male or female, are Abraham's offspring, heirs, according to the promise. The promise to Abraham and Sarah was to come to Isaac. Don't let folk mess you up on that. But Abraham was a man of faith. 
Genesis 15, 6 says, and he, Abraham, believed in the Lord, and he counted to him for righteousness. He believed in God, and God imputed it or counted unto Abraham for righteousness. And always remember when you get to Hebrews 11, the roll call of faith is talking about people just like you and I that, that, that believe God even though Jesus Christ had not come in the flesh yet. They still believe God. They still believe the promise. Romans 4, 3 says about Abraham, for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. In addition to the believer realizing that faith is required to follow God, they must also realize that having faith and using that faith and building that faith is not necessarily easy. Do I have any witnesses in here? That having faith in God is not necessarily easy. It is a challenge. It's hard to always walk by faith when you see so much other stuff. You ever see something happening and God told you he's going to work it out and you want to put your hand on it, want to put your mouth on it? You want to talk about it, but God said, I got this. And because it's so close, because you can see it so clear, you don't want to wait on God? Oh, you got to be disciplined to walk by faith. It's not magical. It's discipline. But each victory helps you some other victory to win. I don't know about you. I messed up some things because I couldn't wait on faith. I couldn't wait on God. And God said, okay, you messed that up, so now I've got to fix that before I get, give you what I told you I was going to give you. Anybody ever do that? Anybody ever go around three times? You want to go around twice? Amen. As we look at Genesis chapter 22, we need to take into consideration that Abraham's journey from this point is from when God, God called him out in Genesis chapter 12. And everything that God, every experience that Abraham and God had, it was building him up for this moment. But everything wasn't beautiful, wasn't nice. There were some challenges. He was lying about Sarah being his wife and not being his wife and everything. So you got to realize whatever you're going through in life, if God is in your life, whatever he came into your life, He's been building you up. He's taking you somewhere. He's got a plan for your life, no matter how ugly it might seem. All things work together for the good to them who love the Lord, who are the called according to the purpose. God, you mean the things that I did before I even accepted you? He said, yeah, I'm God. I saw you before you accepted me, and I still got you. I already told you in my word that when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That means when we were still filthy and worthless, God still found treasure in our trash and sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross to reconcile us back to himself. You can't scare God like we scare everybody else. Tell God anything. You can't shake God's foundation. God says, surprise me if you can. In Genesis 22, Abraham's faith is being challenged, but this is another level of challenge because God already made a promise to him in, in Genesis 12. And then in Genesis 21, he tells Abraham that your descendants are going to come through Isaac, not Ishmael. Oh, my God. But when God tells you something and you receive it, he wants to make sure you understand it. So this is, when we get to Genesis 22, Abraham can go through something really deep. It's actually a picture of God the Father giving up Jesus Christ, his son, sacrificing his son for us. But I tell you, the journey of faith will take you through some tough stuff sometimes. It makes you think God crazy. I don't know what Abraham thought because the scriptures don't tell us what he thought. It just seemed like he just got up and did what God told him. One commentary said he got up early in the morning because he couldn't sleep that night, <laughs> you know, after God told him what to do. But that's just commentary. But Genesis 22 is a major challenge. But I believe everything that Abraham and Sarah went through prior to this built them up for a time such as this. God wanted me to let somebody know today, don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Because everything you've been through, God has called you for such a time as this. In other words, with Christ, nothing goes to waste. It might get recycled, but it will not go to waste. Every up, 
and every down. Every mountain top experience and every valley experience. Every yes and every no and every maybe so. God is building you and I up for such a time like this. If you don't see the total picture, don't worry about it. Trust God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lead not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. I, I'm amazed sometimes at the people that get thrown off their square by what somebody said to them. Because if God Almighty said it, who can veto God? If God told you, why are you underconfirming <laughs> what God already told you? Why are you asking everybody else? God told me something, something. Do you see it? If you go to the highest, you don't have to ask anybody else. If you heard from the highest, you know on your job, when, 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 when the CEO tells you it's going to happen, it's going, you don't go to nobody else. God said. God said. Why are you asking like that? Because God told me. Why you believe in that? Because God said it. You ain't got no money, but God told me. Oh, I wish I had a witness. You, you, how you gonna do that? Because God said He's gonna make it happen. Don't let folk grab you and try to get you to tell you the details. Because frankly, I don't know. But if God said it, somebody said it already. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are. Higher. You sitting here now, I know your testimony, some of your testimony. God done some things you never thought could happen. And he didn't even, he did some things for you, not even with your money. <laughs> with somebody else's money. How many times I heard the testimony? Somebody called me out the clear blue and offered me this. It was a clear blue to you. But God sent them your way. You turn on the news in the evening. You say, oh, my God, I was getting ready to go home that way. And God told me to go another way. And then you saw the mess that took over, that, that took place. And God said, no, I don't want you to go that way. Even though you prayed for those that may have gotten an accident or whatever. But God said, no, go this way today. But look at Abraham in Genesis 22. It's another challenge. Look at 22 and 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did test. Not tempt Abraham. God tempts no man. The word in the Hebrew is actually he tested Abraham. Abraham, get ready to go. Point number one, Abraham's, God's test of Abraham's faith. Point number one, this is God's test of Abraham's faith. God will test your faith. Not so you can fail. So that he can confirm some stuff that he already promised you. And sometimes God wants to, wants to reveal to you and I, you have grown. You are on the right track. You are in my will. Because so many think to be in God's will, you got to speak in tongues and have a crown on your head. And, and, and you got to carry a big, uh, you know, 25-inch Bible. And, uh, never mind. And it came to pass after, after these things that God tested Abraham. And he said to them, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I am. See, when you get used to God calling your name, you don't say, what now? Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. If I call some of y'all, if I call y'all during the week, you say, oh, Pastor, what you want? What now? But when God called you, Abraham was so used to God calling him, he said, behold, here I am. I'm all ears and I'm listening. Look at verse 2. And he said, now take thy son, thine only son, Isaac. I'm glad he put that in there because somebody else said, he had another son. He did. But God said, take thine only son, Isaac, the one who the promise was to come through, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. This is God testing Abraham's faith. To Moriah, I'll show you which mountain, and I want you to sacrifice your only son, the one that thou lovest. 
And when you sacrifice your son, that's why Abraham had the knife. You got to kill him first, and then you burn. You don't burn the boy alive. That's, that wasn't what God was looking for. But what a, what a test. What a test. If God told you to do that. Mm. No, I ain't talking about you had five kids, because then you'd be picking the ones that get on your nerve the most. I'm talking about <laughs> if you only had the one child. Somebody said, I got five of them. Mm. Mm, who made me mad last night? You know. <laughs> so number one, God tested Abraham. Like, number two, Abraham's response to the faith test. Look at verse three. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. It was, a, it was a nice journey. It was a nice journey they had to go. Then on the third day, watch the third day. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And don't forget when they built the temple, when Solomon built the temple, he built it, Mount Moriah in, in Jerusalem. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Make a point. We'll be back. And the Bible said that Abraham knew he was supposed to sacrifice Isaac. So Abraham was believing God for a resurrection or something. But Abraham told his servants, guess what? We'll be back. He's being, his, his faith is being tested. And Abraham, verse 6, took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. That means they agreed to go together. Abraham had Isaac when he was 100. So Abraham might be like 130 years old now. But, but um, Isaac is obedient to the father. You ever heard that before, a son being obedient to the father? Did that, that ring a bell? Isaac was obedient to the Father, even unto the death. You, you may have heard that some way, even unto death. And, 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 and the both of them went together. But look at verse 7. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father? And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt off? We're going to sacrifice. You're taking me to church. I know how this thing works. But I don't see a lamb. Uh, but the son got to trust the father. And the father got to trust the son. So in verse 8, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. They agreed. Together means agreed in the Hebrew. They go on this thing together. So whatever the father told the son, it was all right with the son. Who will go for us? Here am I. Send me. Wow. Look, 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 at, look at verse 9. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. I, I, I don't know if I'm mixing up my scriptures, but it seemed like I never said a mumbling word. I, 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 I don't know where I got that from. It, it seemed like he was obedient unto death and he never said a mumbling word. Oh, like, like, like the sheep before the shearers was done. So when Abraham said God will provide himself a lamb for the offering, the son had to believe what the father believed, and the father believed what the son believed. They were on one accord, it seemed like. Look at verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Every time I read this, I said, I'd be like, all right, God, stop playing. I, I, 
One. Count to ten. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Two. Look at verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. See, God is watching and he's, he's walking you through this faith test. And I said, God, how are you going to give me a test? You're going to test my faith. And then you're going to give me the power to pass the test. Wait a minute. If I'm obedient to you, you will give me the power to do what you told me to do. And the angel of the Lord called out from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God Seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Wow. What a test. You're talking about next level. Next level faith. Don't touch him. Because now, I know. But Abraham, now you know. And then Abraham's faith test results. You know, every time you take a test, you want the results, right? Yeah. I get upset if I go to the doctor and give me a test because they got all this technological advancement. Why I got to wait? <laughs> the test costs a lot of money, even with co-pays. I wish I had a witness in here. Yeah. Why can't I get my information on the spot? But look at Abraham's faith test results. Look at verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him, a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. God still wanted a blood sacrifice. But instead of Isaac, God had a ram caught in the bush. But the whole idea is the ram was behind Abraham. Sometimes you don't see what's behind you until you do what God told you in front of you. Oh, my God, because what's in front of you needs to be handled before you can look behind you to see from which you come. I don't know. Abraham could have passed a ram on the way to the mount to sacrifice Isaac, but God didn't let him see the ram there because God didn't want to mess up the plan. All I'm trying to say is stop trying to look everywhere else and look to the area where God is sending you to. If he wants you to see something else, he'll show it to you when, when it's the right time. Stop looking around at everybody else. Oh, they got this. They got that. God bless them with that. God bless them with that. God ain't take them to this. Why is God taking me to that? Why is God taking me to that? Ain't nobody else in the church go through this. Oh, I got the hardest thing to go through. Ain't nobody going through what I go through. How do you know? You little busy talking about your own mess. You ain't checked with nobody. You ain't cared about nobody. When's the last time you called somebody to check it on and prayed about them, prayed with them? When's the last time you did that when you got out of your stuff and started blessing somebody else? Wow. Do you hear Abraham Ingram on his cell phone? Guess what? God want me to sacrifice Isaac. What do you think I should do? If God said it, go do it. Always trying to get some kind of second confirmation on God. Behind the ram is a ram, and he offered the ram of Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. It also means in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen that when you do what God has called you to do, that God will, he will see what you're doing, and he'll provide what you need. Jehovah Jireh, he will provide. Don't ask me how, don't ask me when, but he will provide. I don't know where that ram came from. I don't know why he kept so quiet, but he was there. He couldn't get away. They said he was stuck. Were you caught up? Oh, God, but catch some stuff up for you, won't he? He said the ram was all caught up in the bush. Couldn't. 
Abraham got some wonderful faith test results. Look at verse 15. The angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of the heaven the second time and said, by myself. God saying, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing. That's the title of our message. Because thou hast done this thing. What thing? The thing I told you to do. Wow. You did what I told you to do. I said, God, why is that important? He said, because so many of y'all don't do what I tell Wow. Because thou hast done this thing. How many of us would take what God says and put our twist on it? Now, if you're cooking and you're baking cakes, you can put your own little seasoning, your own little flavor in there. But when God says you do something, don't add nothing. Just let it go. Just, just, amen. Just, just do what he said. Don't get cute. Don't get fancy with it. Don't go run around telling everybody. I'm very sorry. <laughs> just do what God tells you to do. As he, he told his servants, you all stay here. Because everybody, everything is not for everybody. Sometimes your friends can't come. Sometimes your co-workers can't come. It's not their test. It's your test. God is speaking to you. And we well, sometimes will bring our distractions with us. Oh, I need your help. I need your support. Did God tell you that? Pray for me. God taking me through something. Did God tell you that? Everything I've been through, he took me through. <laughs> woo Because I have done this thing, because you've been obedient to what I asked you to do, look what he says. And hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, what are you holding on to that is so precious that when God told you to let it go, you didn't? And you still won't. And you wonder why you can't move ahead. All that noise behind your back is the ram caught up in the bush that you're supposed to use, but you haven't been obedient, so you can't touch him. He's still behind you. You don't even know he's behind you because you haven't taken care of what's in front of you. Oh, you don't know? Mama used to say, eat what's on your plate first before you go back to get some more. Oh, I wish I had somebody to pray with me on the day. God's trying to let us know whatever he's told you to do. Go ahead and do it. Stop making excuses. Stop thinking you're too good. It's beneath you. If God said it, what? Oh, it's going to make me look foolish. I can't use that excuse because I've done some things that made me look stupid, foolish, idiotic. I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about nobody in church. I don't want y'all to, to reside on that note. I'm talking about me. So, oh, thank you, sir. So, um, God won't give you anything to make you look more foolish than we already made ourselves look foolish about. Because I've done this thing that has not well withheld thy son, thy only son. Look at verse 17. This is how, this is what he gets for being obedient. Obedience is always better than sacrifice. Look at verse 17. That in blessing, I will bless thee. Just that part blew my mind. That in blessing, I will bless thee. This, ain't, this is not me blessing my wife, my wife blessing me. This is God Almighty blessing. He blesses the whole earth. That in blessings, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, can't nobody beat God at math. Oh, my God. I will multiply thy seed as what? The, star, the astronomers are still counting. The galaxy, they don't know how many stars in heaven, but God says, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And I'll tell my wife, every time we go, two or three years, we still find these sand. Sand in the beef bag, sand in our shoes. Sand in my brain, no. But, you know, <laughs> as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, which means your seed shall be victorious. From Abraham's obedience, 
to sacrifice Isaac. Look how many folk got blessed. God is trying to let you today, let you know today there's something he wants you to do, and it's not just for you. It's for so many generations after you. So your seed can be blessed. So others can be blessed. So he got, we're so selfish. God didn't call us to be selfish. He'll take care of us if we would just be obedient. Because thou hast done this thing, I will bless thee. I will multiply thy seeds like the stars of heaven and the sand which upon the seashore, and they shall be victorious. We spend so much time talking about how evil the world is, but how great is our God. And in thy seed, look at verse 18, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Because thou hast what? Obeyed what? Because I have obeyed my voice. And sometimes you hear the voice of God, you got to get somewhere and get quiet and shut up and sit down. And stop being so busy, busy. Do you know sometimes being, being in Christ ain't got uh, nothing to do with a whole lot of running around. I'm over here and I'm over there and I'm preaching up down here and I'm teaching up down here and I'm around the corner over there. Sometimes it just be still because sometimes it's a still small voice. And sometimes we're so busy we can't even quiet down to hear God. Look at verse 19. Abraham didn't lie to his servants, did he? So Abraham returned to what? His young men. And they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. That's powerful. How he passed that test. A life in Christ requires faith. It seems from Genesis 22 and all the other scriptures that God was challenging his faith. But at the same time, God was building him up. Don't be afraid of the challenge. They're doing some goofy challenges. One time, what was they doing? Cocoa or something? And they were, and they were uh, putting all this stuff in their mouth and choking. And recently we saw people were leaning back and somebody would pull their legs from under them and they would hit their head. I'm talking about the challenges of God. The challenges that result in something. You might be going through something right now and it's a challenge, but God's got you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Stop being fooled by the fact that we think that when the sun is shining, that's when God is with us. He's been with you when it was raining. He was with you when you were in the tsunami. Who do you think kept you? When the storm settled and the sun came back up and you saw the building around you laying around you and you're still breathing? Oh, he's a keeper, God. But God will build you up. He'll challenge your faith. He'll test your faith. He promised and called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And God has a plan for your life and my life. Should we accept it? Wow. The choice is yours. Some people want a part of the plan. No, no. I'll I take part one, God. Part two seems too hard. He says, I got you through part one. It seemed easy because I was there. And I'm still there. But take the challenge. If you're interested in God's plan for your life, there's only one way to accept the plan. That's through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh through the Father but by me. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe him should not perish but have everlasting life. What does God call you to sacrifice today? What are you holding on to? And you know it's blocking your relationship with God. Wow. Don't let people get in your way. I can't. I can't go to church. Why can't you go anywhere else? And they don't mean you no good. (laughs) Perhaps God is waiting to say to you one day, because thou hast done this thing, this thing that he's been trying to get you to do. If you're here today, what have you been trying to avoid? God been trying to bless you and your seeds.
like the stars in heaven, like the sand on the seashore. That's the kind of God we serve. Hallelujah. I know you're blessed, but that's not all of it. God's not through blessing you. There's more to it. But he needs that now I know moment with you. He said, now, I gave you a lot of stuff, but eh, I can't give you a passing grade on how you've been handling it. Because everything I gave you is in your house. Everything I bless you with is in your family. Everything I gave you, you use it on you. So when you're going to bless somebody else, I didn't give it to you just to use it on you. I get seeds of the soul to those that know how to disperse it abroad and share the love and the blessings of God. Because thou hast done this thing. I said, God, I'm glad you, you said it like that because so many times, because you did this, it's a bad thing. But God's not trying to get you. He's trying to bless you. He wanted to get you to bless you. He don't want to get you to get you. Because he wanted to get us, he never would have sent Jesus. I was already gotten. Because of Adam, Adam and Eve, my homies from back in the day, my ancestrals. I told you, you're going to that's a stand. If you do ancestry.com, they're not going to show you about Adam and Eve, but the Bible will. They don't go back that far. But if you want the blessings of God full in your life, be obedient to God and God.